Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Jackson from Regarding 365 and I'm here with my friends Ben and Simon to have a bit of a conversation about something new that's dropped with Yammer this week. We're all Microsoft MVPs, we're also long-time Yammer users, we're lovers of collaboration and internal communication and we want to talk to you about this new feature and I'm going to ask Simon to tell you what's happened. What is this new feature? Thanks Rebecca. Um, look, the new feature is called Post on Behalf of. So, uh, it enables people in the Yammer network to allocate the authority to someone else to be able to, to post on their behalf. It's a feature that's been in demand for some time, uh, particularly to support senior leaders uh, to post and, and encourage engagement in the network, and particularly to let assistants and internal communicators uh, take on the role for posting on their behalf. Now, I'm not as familiar with um, with kind of the Yammer alternatives out there anymore because I've been working with Yammer for a little while, but I understand this feature is prevalent in um, in other tools. I don't know whether we want to name them, but Ben, I think you know a little bit about that one. Well, I, th I think it's more a case of where has this feature come from in a conceptual um, frame. So uh, communications, people have had these tools post on behalf of in the consumer space for quite a while. Um, really on, in what we're talking about is uh, businesses and brands. So where you have a LinkedIn page for your business or a Facebook page for your business, you'll let some people post to that page and speak on behalf of your company. So the communications professionals out there have those tools at their disposal in the consumer space to reach the B2C kind of audience. And what they've taken is those kind of tools and applied them to the internal enterprise business context. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been working in internal comms for a while and certainly um, absolutely guilty of doing some ghostwriting. In fact, like, you know, as recent as this month, often, you know, leaders just need someone to get the key messages. If you're lucky, they might tune it to their voice, but generally I find they just send it out. Um, but I've certainly, I, I don't know, Yammer is just different for me, the idea of people putting stuff on behalf of other people in Yammer doesn't feel right. And is is that just because I'm too, am I a Yammer purist? I think, I think it, it's a really, it's a great question, Rebecca. And I think it goes to, in, in a sense, I see there's, there's really two ways in which organisations have taken on Yammer. One group very much see it as a communication channel. It's kind of posting. It's what Ben was talking about before. It's people blasting out broadcast messages. Um, the other group are really focused on that wide scale enterprise collaboration opportunity, getting messages out, but getting messages out in an authentic two way communication mode. And I think your hesitation and some of mine goes to that second point. It goes to that bit of do am I if, if this starts happening wide scale in a network, does it just become a broadcast network and does authenticity crash i mean ben you know what do you think is it can you get an authentic message in this kind of post on behalf of way well i, th I think you're uh, coming there's there's two actual features here that um you saw potentially maybe last year uh, midway through last year a massive focus on video and that at times actually seems completely the opposite direction to this feature it is so if you're on the video it's pretty hard to fake someone else being, you know, there saying your message, whatever you are. You can read a script, sure, but the CEO has to be the one presenting the, or well, assuming we're talking about leader, leadership here, um, they've got to be the one in front of the camera. And maybe that was actually fulfilling a need, which was there's a whole lot of ghostwriting going on from the CEO in the all company emails or whatever we had. And the way of getting around that, which people were actually wanting, was this video because no one could short circuit the authenticity of the message there and then now we've kind of gone back the other way and said well actually we've got this thing that can can ghostwrite um, someone's messages on yammer and i think it, it devalues a little bit if it's used the actual personal response to that conversation you could have with the ceo so the fact that you know you've got a post and the ceo liked it like that, that's a pretty awesome thing to happen in a large organisation. You feel pretty chuffed about um, having that happen. But if you knew that it wasn't actually them and it was actually the comms team or someone else, like it just sort of, you know, maybe you're never quite sure uh, who yeah. it was. Yeah, and it. you know what? 
I mean, I, I, I love authenticity in leadership. I, I want to know that CEOs are humans and do human things. And as much as the internal comms person in me is like, you know, I don't want typos and things like that. You know, a, a typo shows that someone is real. A different way of structuring a message shows that someone's real. And hey, if a leader wants to type an essay into Yama or company, I'm just glad they've done it and they're using yeah. it to get their message out there rather than it being tuned. I think that's the I think that's the thing we've all and and it almost kind of comes to this is the logical conclusion of the the obsession many people had with oh adoption depends upon senior leader messaging and participation. And you get to the point where you're kind of like even if that senior leader messaging and participation is fake it's going to drive adoption. And I'm and I'm not sure, I think that's where you've got the point where it could tip over and actually without the authenticity, you lose influence, you lose adoption, you lose engagement. Now, we can all hope that this is used by people in sensible ways around the minimum use cases of some announcements and some critical messaging, but let's hope that people are, you know, too much of a good thing with this feature could be a problem for us all. But you said you, the key word you said there, which interests me, is sensible. And at the risk of being insulting, like what you know, what is what is sensible? And the you know, we want to democratize Yammer to the people, um, which means the internal comms should be able to be more hands off, that community managers don't necessarily need to be, you know, highly paid consultants that come in and, and do yeah. things. So um, we we shouldn't assume sensibility. We should drive, use the features of the tools to drive them down the path of success. No, I, right. I, look, I, I agree with Preaching where you're going. Preaching to the converted here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I agree with where you're going. I think I, I, I've always believed um, that, you know, like you – typos happen, communities can coach leaders through behaviour, and I've seen some great examples of that um, where, you know, community engagement actually built leader engagement, which is the exact opposite of the traditional adoption model, right? It's actually the power of the community driving leaders to get involved. And I think, you know, one of my dangers here is I think the comms-only use of Yammer is the cheapest use of Yammer and the lowest value use of Yammer. I seriously question sometimes what it adds to a um, intranet site that has commenting. Like, what are you actually doing over those two? Usually the only difference between the two is that Yammer is not moderated and commenting is moderated. That's, that's the only difference I've often seen of that comms only model. And I think the exponential value of the collaboration is so rich, much richer that we should all be fighting to make that the centre of our Yammer networks. Um, but, you know, I, I recognise that's not every organisation and not every organisation's culture supports that. So we have to live in this world where some people want to use it one way and some want to use it the other. Absolutely. Uh, ben, before before we started recording, you were talking about kind of branding, and you used some words that I I don't I actually don't know. Rinster and Finster. Can you explain to me what you mean by that, and and your thoughts on it in the context of this new feature? Yeah. So th let's be clear. These are things that I've only recently discovered because I'm probably too. We're old just for, sharing for the uh, for the intended audience. But um, you have these consumer consumer platforms and. Um, you have a brand that is beyond yourself if you're one of these sort of celebrities, influencers, whoever you think you are. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Um, and they have public profiles. We expect a team to be behind that profile. And then it's turned out that actually, if you're really important and have a public profile, you actually want to have um, private photos that are your real life without the makeup, without all the, you know, um, slick branding of it all that you can share with your friends because actually the platform's suitable for that kind of sharing, right? So you actually have to have a fake account as a celebrity to share with your friends because the people who own your real account, too many people follow it and it would be against your brand to have that thing, um, you know, look, looking like whatever you first got up in the morning. So um, you see the same, you can see an analogy here with the Yammer sort of 
Um, I've got the CEO profile, they have a brand, and I've got the comms team managing the CEO's brand. Unfortunately, they probably don't have a private account that they can put their own sort of, uh, you know, not so polished content on, but maybe that's what we need as well. I don't know. But you've got this consumer analogy of a little bit of a backlash from the, the brand of the person when that brand becomes too big for them, which tends to happen in the CEO sort of case. Um, the question I would really like people to ask their comms team when they ask for this feature is why are you doing this? So if you are looking for extra reach as a result of some CEO halo effect, there's probably better ways of doing it. But people need to be transparent and clear about what this feature you know, someone's going to have to ask for permission to post on your behalf. So if you're the CEO, you should ask that person back, why do you need this? Why do yep. you think it's going to help you? And if you're the comms person, you should have a really good answer for why you can't do that on your own bat, um, because that's your job. Yeah, and also, what are the we risks? Can diminish, oh, sorry, I would like... Um, Delegate responsibility is a big thing. Giving someone permission to speak on your behalf, and, and we know that in, in Yammer it doesn't – you can't tell as an end user, like, when someone's doing it. That's pretty huge. Like, that's something you – like, CEOs give an EA, so it shouldn't be given lightly, I would hope. No, that's – it's exactly where I was going with my question, which is what's the risk? Like, organisations need to think about the risk of this – and I thought, Rebecca, your blog post on this was really good in terms of giving people some practical things to think about in terms of this. I mean, you really had some some really useful suggestions as to how people should think about this feature and, and draw it out. You know, I was just kind of challenging myself because, um, and, you know, let, let's do some final words. So my final words on, on this are... Um, you know, we, we've all had experience and live in the real world of collaboration and internal communications. Um, and it's something that I'm on, on a bit of a, a mental um, bender on, which, which is what we tell people to do in practice doesn't always translate well to reality. So think about your reality. And if you're in a reality where um, your leadership are just not there in terms of um, authentic posting and doing things themselves, maybe this can be part of your journey and part of your positioning. So, you know, the why, absolutely, why are you doing it and, ha and have a think about it and think about the consequences of it. Final words, gentlemen. Um, I'd just say on the journey part with the authenticity, just be really careful that this doesn't take your journey in a backward step in the long run. So yeah. this is a really easy feature to turn on. It's attractive for short-term gain, but if you really want that cultural transformation which comes with authentic people, your leaders being on Yammer, then just think again, just make sure that this is the right the step in that right direction. So building on those two comments, the reason you have a Yammer network is you want your employees to be able to communicate with each other to create value for the organisation. Make sure that your leaders chattering away with the help of their EAs and their comms team is not dampening that broader communication and collaboration to the benefit of your organisation strategy. Awesome. Thank you both so much for your time. I love chatting with you when we're not recording. So delightful that we can record it. And hopefully other people will find this conversation of benefit. Definitely want to know what people think. So if you've been watching this and you've got thoughts, if you agree or disagree, throw it all at us. Um, and also we were thinking about, you know, maybe if it's of interest, we might have chats like this about Yammer in the future because we all love Yammer collaboration, internal comms. So, you know, thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ty. Um, I really called you Tony then. Oh, my God. That's I'm not right. even going to edit that out. I'll just make it funny. Simon, because I know your name. Um, thank you. And, um, yeah, people put things in the comments. Is that how they do it on YouTube? Yes, there and subscribe over there. Thanks, Bye. Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Bye. Bye. Bye.